Thank you so much for your company this morning. Now, one of New Zealand's best-known award-winning comic artists responsible for the look of the much-loved Bro Town has teamed up with an award-winning author, screenwriter and film director. And the result is an electrifying graphic sci-fi novel, Helen and the Go-Go Ninjas. Welcome to the cafe, Ant Sang and Michael Bennett. Yes, welcome. Yeah. So nice to have you here. We should get a bit of backstory first. Michael, let's start with you. Um, your screen work, you've done so much, and your feature film, Matariki, won Best Feature Film Screenplay at the New Zealand Screenwriting Award as well. And you've all, that was five different stories in one, wasn't it? Yes, multi-narrative, and what? set in South Auckland, yeah. So you've done that, and what else has been, what you've been involved with? Um, oh, a lot of television, writing and directing for TV, TV drama, TV documentary. Um, last seven years has been particularly focused on, I've been uh, done a lot of work on the Taina Porter story. Taina's a very good friend of mine and uh, so done, uh, wrote a book and made a documentary and now made a feature, feature length drama on his story and yeah. Um, Different genres. Yeah. yeah, it must be tough working on something like the Tana Porter case because I guess the more you know about it, the more unjust it probably felt to you, and it feels like it's taken a long time to get this right. Yeah, it's uh, you know, having been involved for almost a decade, it's still I look at it and I think, how on earth did this happen? He was just so clearly innocent from day one, and um, mm. yeah. It's craziness. And, and a big responsibility too because I guess you're helping the rest of New Zealand understand what's going on when you're making movies and writing books about yeah. it. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, y you know, y you can read a newspaper article and you can see a, a, you know, t a news item, but I think that doesn't take you into the actual human story. And I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted to do is, you know, I'm very close to Tainer, he's a lovely man, I want a New Zealand to know the, 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 the truth about this guy. Mm, and it's a fascinating read too, In Dark mm. Place is just incredible. You spend every every page going, what, how did that even happen? So you, yeah. this is your background that you've come from, and you yeah. have come from a very different background, haven't you? Sure. Yeah. Brotown was yeah. your baby. Well, was, you, you were <laughs> responsible for the look of Brotown. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. Um, so I've, I've worked in comics and I've worked in TV doing animation type projects. Uh, so yes, totally, totally different to, uh, to Michael's. And when you sat down with the Brotown team and you thought this is the look, did you have any other options or did you just know straight away that this is how it was going to look? No, it was, it was definitely a, an evolution. Uh, if you saw the earlier um, drawings, they, they look completely different to, wow. to what ended up on screen. Uh, I worked with the producer and the Naked Samoans and, and they, they, they were pretty much driving what it was going to look like. So it, it took um, it took about a year or, or more of, of development till we got to the final design. How does that work? So when you're working, obviously this is that's your creative input because you're doing you know the pictures. Mm. How does it work when you're working with somebody else who's got a very clear idea of what they want as well? Do you have to meet somewhere in the middle, or does one of you crush and, the and other? And the best collaborations, it's kind of they say what they want, you. Go away, do, do your you thing, want. and hopefully it's like two things that come together to make something even better than either of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of collaborations with those two very backgrounds, you've come mm -hmm. together, and we have Helen and All the right. Go Go Ninjas. So, how did this come about? Yeah, it started a few years ago as a as a screenplay. Uh, I mean, the goal was to make a you know a. a a female-led action film, um, which is sort of seems to have really become timely, which is yeah, which is all good. good timing, yeah. um, but it's a very you know it's a very big budget film. It's uh, you know it's a Hollywood kind of a movie. So um, while I'm waiting for the big budget to come along and make the movie, um, started to talk to Ant about the idea, and Ant kind mm. of fell in love with it, starting with the title, I think. Yeah. And, um, Ant read the script, and um, it sort of felt like something we go. could do together. Mm, so definitely. who was Helen, and who are the Go Go Ninjas? <laughs> Helen is a oh the girl. This ha Helen is a is a young idealistic um, woman uh, who 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 would really like to save the world, but perhaps doesn't know how. She gets kidnapped by the Go Go Ninjas, who are a group of warrior women, would you say, from from three hundred years in the future. So she gets whipped into the future to save the world from these uh, big orange floating things called peace balls, which are. Enslaving mankind. Excellent. Mm. Quite an art when you're doing drawings for this. How do mm. you give characters emotion and individuality? Are there any little techniques that you have? I uh, I act out a lot when I'm drawing. Okay. I have a mirror. Like, well, I've got a couple of mirrors. So, like for, <laughs> for close up, so I'm kind of pulling faces in the mirror and I'm drawing at the same time. I'm trying to feel what they're feeling. So I'd love to see you work in cafes actually. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid that actually <laughs> for that reason. Who's a widow in the corner? <laughs> so who is the book aimed at? What sort of age group? 
I guess there's a core market of you know people who love graphic novels, which is I guess early teens through to late twenties, mm -hmm. and but it's um, I mean for me. I guess what we've really tried to do with this with this book is is, is to go beyond that because you know it's about at its heart you know it's a time travel book and I think time travel is about you know really wanting to be able to go back and fix up the stuff that you've screwed up and so there's a real environmental message at the heart of this book and um, you, you know I think that's probably the most important story any of us can tell right now mm. is you know we've got one world and you know once that's wrecked mm. it's not going to get unwrecked and the Time travel only really happens in graphic novels and movies, so let's wake up. Um, so I guess, it, you know, I think it's probably got an audience beyond the core audience that, that graphic novelists mm. would normally But then reach. also Helen goes and kicks some serious butt, which is yeah. great as well. Environmental <laughs> message and some butt kicking. Yes, yeah. woman power, environmental issues, very timely. So many layers to a book, so many layers to the movie that you were talking about. How close do you think you are to getting this turned into a movie, Michael? Yeah, well, who knows? Like, making films is, you know, a much more sensible career idea is to buy a lottery every week. So you, you, don't, <laughs> you have no idea. But, um, but, you know, what's fantastic about what we've done now is that, you know, there's this incredibly tangible thing that, that studio executives who might not yes. like to read 100 pages of scripts, they can now look at some great pictures. They can do this and go, yep, yeah, I get it now, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting. Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it will become a movie because I can actually really envision it. Thank you both so much for coming yeah, on. Well done, guys. Uh, awesome work. Great chat. Helen and the Go Go Ninjas and in Michael's book is available in bookstores right now.